God is so good. Amen. All the time. I just want to say that uh, the Lord changed my message. This message that He had given me, He, he changed it. And um, the thing that's not the scripture that's on your um, pamphlet, it's not what I'm going to read from unless God wants me to. But it was like the last minute kind of thing, and I'm just going to be obedient to God the Lord. and see where this goes. And he said, all the other scriptures you wrote down, you're going to tie into it. So we will see what Jesus has. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I'm going to tell you this morning when I went to leave, I had like the snow on my truck, on my windshield. And I thought, Lord, I cannot climb up there to get it off. What can I do? And I looked over there at the house and there's a rake over there propped up against the house. Of course, I said, see that rake over there? I said, yes. He said, go over there and get it and rake that snow off your windshield. Amen. So that's what I did. I was out there raking the snow. <laughs> when there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> yes, if there's a will, there's a way. Hallelujah. You know, God is so good. And I want to tell you this. This is the word that the Lord had given me. I had um, went and I, I went back in the house and I got on the computer real fast. And I typed out a couple things and it said, the Lord says, pursue, overtake, recover all. God is calling his people to pursue, to overtake, and recover all in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Because God has a mighty plan for us. We don't understand the full plan. We do not understand, but God sees it. God sees it. Hallelujah. And even, even the other day, I was at the gas station off 78 in Monroe, and I was just just feeling discouraged, you know, we get that way, and I was talking to my Jesus. I said, Jesus, and I was telling him all about this stuff, and he told me personally, he said, pursue, overtake, and recover all. And then this morning, he wanted me to bring this word to the church. I said, yes, Lord, I will do that. So what's on your pamphlet? That's, that's not what God wants me to bring, and I have to be obedient to him. Hallelujah. And and just know this, some of the words that I'm going to read, I may not pronounce it right, that I need to go and, and uh, relearn myself those words to pronounce them as names. And you know how some of the names in the Bible are like difficult to pronounce. Hallelujah. Okay, in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag, on the third day, because David and his men were out of town. And they came back in, and he had like, I think, I believe it was like 600 men that was with him, or 6,000. I have to go back and check that. Ziklag, on the third day, the, the Amalekites had invaded the south in Ziklag and smitten, smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that were therein, and they slew not any either great or small, but carried them away, went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever been in such a distress and cried so much and you spoke to the Lord and you could not cry no more? You would try to squeeze a tear out and it wouldn't come out no more. There was no more left in you. I've been in that place. And David and his two wives were taken, David's two wives were taken captives and Ahim the Jezreelites and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Canaanite. And see, Nabal's wife was Abigail. I just want to tell you this. Nabal's wife was Abigail. Nabal's wife means, Nabal's name means fool. But 
he ended up dying, and David took her as his wife. And David was greatly distressed, and for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord, Amen. his God. You know, the enemy came in unaware when they was not there in the town, when they were not home, and the enemy came in and took their family, took their plunder, took everything that they had. And that's what the enemy will do sometimes. He will come in in those unaware places that you're not aware of and take things that does not belong to him. He has no legal right to that stuff. And God gives us authority to pursue, overtake, and recover all. Hallelujah. Amen. And you know, we got to encourage ourselves in the Lord and in the power of His might. We got to know who our God is and know who we serve. Hallelujah. And David said to Abinathar Ab that the priest. Hey, Amalek, son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abinathar brought there the ephod to David. And David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? You know, when an enemy comes in like that, when unexpected things happen, we got to get down before the king. That's right. we got to lay our face down and say, Lord, what should I do? Should I go in and overtake them? Yes. Hallelujah. And he answered him. Can you imagine this? The Lord was answering David just as he answers us. He said, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail, recover all. God is telling this church, you shall pursue, you shall overtake, and you shall, without fail, recover all. Hallelujah. So David went, and he and his 600 men that were with him, and came to the brook of Bazar, where those that were left behind stayed. But David pursued, and he and 400 men and four, two hundred abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook of Bersar. One third of David's men stayed behind, and only four hundred men went in to recover this stuff back, recover the family back. Sometimes the enemy will come in and snatch your kids away, lure them out. He will, he will start entertaining them and pulling them out into places that they should not be. But God is telling us to pursue the enemy and overtake them and recover all. Hallelujah. And that's exactly what they did. But David pursued and, and, and 400 men for 200 stayed behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook. And they found an Egyptian in the field, brought him to David and gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him. For he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights. And David said unto him, To whom belongest thou? And whence art thou? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt, servant to the Amalekites. And my master left me. Because three days ago I fell sick. We made an invasion upon the south of the Chetonites and upon the coast which belongeth to Judah and upon the south of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, Canest thou bring me down to this company? And he said, Swear unto my God, to me by my God, that thou will neither kill me nor deliver me into the hands of my master. I will bring thee down to this company. And when he had brought him down, behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land. And the Philistines and out of the land of Judah 
and David smote them from the twilight evening until the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them except 400 young men which rode upon camels fled. <clears throat> See, David went in and his men, and he recovered all that the enemy came in and took from him, took from those men. They went in. How do you go in to take back what the enemy has taken from you? You've got to seek God's face. You've got to inquire of God. Sometimes you've got to fast. Sometimes, sometimes you just got to fast and pray and seek his face. Praise him. And he will pursue your enemies for you. He will give you strength to go in and do it through prayer. Hallelujah. Because God is mighty in power. He is our strong tower. He is our shield. He is our buckler. Hallelujah. The Bible says to trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. The Bible says we've got to trust in him. Place your confidence in the Lord. We've got to have our trust, our confidence in him. And we got to have, we can't lean not unto our understanding. We can't lean not unto our own wisdom, our own knowledge. Because it's nothing. We've got to seek the wisdom of God. Seek the knowledge of God. Because he foresees things. He can look down in time. He knows what's going on behind the wall. He knows what's back there. And he knows if you're going to be safe when you go back there. That's why God wants you to pursue him, to, to inquire of him, to seek his face. Because God has got mighty plans. He has a mighty plan. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. If we acknowledge him in all of our ways, he will direct our paths. He will put direction on our feet. He will tell us where to go. And the Bible says, Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace, believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. The, you know, the Bible says that when we accept Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost comes in and takes their abode up in you. They come in and live in you. They walk through you. They'll speak through you. They'll fight the enemy through you. Yeah. Hallelujah. They, since they live in us, it's like I'm seeing this up here. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost lives in us. When we bow the knee, they're bound the knee. Hallelujah. That's how holy God is. Praise God. He is a holy God. He is a mighty God. i never seen it like that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says the God of my rock. He is the God of my rock. And him will I trust. He is my shield and the horn of my salvation. He's my high tower and my refuge. He's my savior. Thou savest me from violence. God will save you from violence. God will protect you from the enemy. There's times, though, that God, when things happen, like what happened to Martha, God will allow you to go into a rest, and you think, well, why, why is it like this? Why did I break my arm? Why did you allow, allow me to do this, God? But God has a plan. There's a plan. There's a will in the will. God has a mighty plan going on. God will provide a way for you to rest. When, when, when God says, I, I need her to rest. I hear God, I need her to rest. There's something God is doing. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's going to restore back. I can tell you this. God is going to do it. He is mighty in power. You have to trust him. Hallelujah. 
Judah. He is the God that will pursue our enemies and cause them to vanish like they never existed. Yes. He flicks them off, hallelujah, like this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, like they were never there. He is so mighty in power. Yes. Hallelujah. He is the God that will bring us up out of that pit of despair. We may feel like we have been in this pit of despair, but he is the God that will restore your joy, your peace back to you, and he will bring you out of the pit of despair. Hallelujah. The Bible says, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined his ear and heard my cry. Hallelujah. You know, when you're praying to God, he inclines his ear and he hears your cry. He knows your heart. He knows your innermost being. He knows your thought process. For he made you. He created you in his image. He knows your beginnings to your end. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon the rock and established my goings. He's the God that puts my feet upon In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Bible says, Look in unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hallelujah. He is sitting there in his kingly robe, in his mighty crown, and he's orchestrating everything. The enemy thought he had the upper hand. God said, no, I was in control of it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Nobody can't touch your bone unless God allows it to get broke. Hallelujah. But God will allow things to put you in a rest because he sees you need to be rested. And there's no other way you would rest unless something happens. And sometimes God uses that for his good, for his good. Hallelujah. God's going to turn it around. It's being turned. It's already turned. Hallelujah. It's already turned. Hallelujah. For all the promises of God in him are yea. And in him, amen. Unto the glory of God by us. Yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is awesome. He is mighty in power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. The Bible says, Blessed be God, even the Father of the, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and God of all comfort. Hallelujah. You may be in a battle. You're like, God, where are you at? Where are you at? God knows your battle. He's seen it before you even got it. He knew it was on the way. He's seen it down in time. But sometimes we are allowed to go through things because God is shaping us. God is positioning us. Hallelujah. But in those battles, I found that God will give us rest at times. But there's times you're going to cry. You're going to get down on your face and cry. And you're not going to know what to do. But there's times there, there, there's breaks that comes in the battles. Hallelujah. But he's the God that comforts you. And when he comforts you, you just love on him. Jesus said, just love on him. You know who I am. And I like to go in there and just love on Jesus wherever I am at. I'll be buffing up hard work, and I'll be loving on Jesus. And he'll be right there with me. I can be high speed, but and I'll be loving on Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Who comforted us in all our tribulations that we may be able to comfort them which are in trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Hallelujah. See, because God comforts us, we can comfort others that's going through something. We will know how to speak to them we will know how to pet on them. Joey, you will know how to pet on Martha. Martha's going to know how to pet back on them. Hallelujah. I made her a cake. Oh. I'm proud of you. God has smile on you for that. Bless you. Hallelujah. The Bible says, be careful 
for nothing. But everything by prayer and supplications. With thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Through Christ Jesus. He will keep your minds. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome to me. That's amazing to me. Praise God. When he keeps your mind, he guards it. It's like a, it's like a guard standing there guarding your mind. He protects it like a military guard, either to prevent hostile invasion. Because you know how your mind is. There's battles going on continuously up here. But God can put you in perfect peace. Like a, he's there like, like, like a military guard, keeping your mind in perfect peace. Hallelujah. Not allowing the enemy to throw things in there. Because we've got the helmet of salvation on. Hallelujah. The breastplate of righteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The of truth, the feet shot with preparation of the gospel of peace. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, and we have our faith in Jesus. The Bible says that I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. No matter what you're going through, Jesus was there. When you were going through that hard battle, you said, Lord, why did this happen to me? Jesus said, I was there. He said, didn't I tell you I never leave you nor forsake you, but I'll be with you to the end? I was there. I was there with you, Martha, when you fell. I was there. See, the, the enemy thinks he's in, he's in control, but God's in control over all. Over all. Even over that old enemy. That little old serpent. That little old thing that God's going to hold up one day. And, and this, we're going to be like, is that the one? Is that the one that aggravated us, tormented us? Is that the one? He's going to be a nothing. Yes. Nothing. He is nothing. Is anything impossible for our God? Trust the Lord. God can restore your home. God can restore your marriage. God can draw your lost loved ones back to Him. God can give you rest and peace in the midst of the storm. You could be right in the storm. And everything's being thrown at you from left to right, from front to behind, on top, every which way. And God says, I'm going to make you stay in a perfect peace with me. Because you shall stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. God can change the darkness that you have been in into sunshine. He can make the sun shine into that dark place and bring you out of a horrible peace. God can shut the mouth up of the lions as he did for Daniel. God can send the arrow back to the enemy that was sent to you that, had, that has been pursuing you. He kept throwing them. God can make them boomerang go back to the enemy, bring damage to the enemy in Jesus' name. That the arrow that, that the enemy has thrown is going to go back to the enemy. Hallelujah. God can be the doctor that restores the arm of Pastor Martha. He can be, if she has to go for operation, but we're not believing it, but if she does, he can be the doctor in that operating room. God said to say that. He is the God that's watching over her. There's an anointing on her life. Amen. Hallelujah. And he is not finished with that anointing. He has invested in her as he invested in you. There's a great investment that he has placed in each and every one of us. And the investment, when you make an investment, there's going to come a day that you're going to go draw on that investment. Her day is here. God has been drawing. He's not through drawing. There's things that needs to come out of the way. Hallelujah. Out of that deposit, that, that, that investment.
that he's put in her. Hallelujah. And in you. He's got an investment in you. He sees you valuable. He sees you important. You are mighty warriors for Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. You are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Hallelujah. The Bible says, but if, the Bible, you know how the enemy comes in like a flood. God said, I will raise the standard against him. And also, the Bible says that we should pursue, overtake, and recover all. And the Bible also says, but if he be found out, he shall restore sevenfold. That enemy has to pay back sevenfold. He is found out in the name of Jesus. He shall give all the substance of his house. See, that's what happened when David went in to take the plunder. He went in and took everything. He, he killed the enemy. He slayed him. Hallelujah. That enemy knew who David was. He went in. When you're pursuing the enemy in prayer, don't stop. Don't stop until your possessions are back. Don't stop. And continue to pray even afterwards. The Bible says, And I will restore to you the years the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. You hear that? That I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord, your God, that had dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. Amen. See, God will take that battle that you're in to bless you. He will find a way to bless you. If you're praying, seeking God's face, and he, he always knows that you're present with Him, that He knows that you've got an altar built with Him, that He knows that He's going to hear you come before Him. He can trust you. Yeah, He knows you. He knows you personally, one-on-one. -on -one. He's intimate with Glory you. God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because how, how, can, how can He know you personally? And you know him personally, unless, unless you commune with each other. You had that one-on-one -on -one conversation. You talk to him just like I'm talking to you. Just talk to him. Hallelujah. You will never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaidens. In those days will I pour out of my spirit. God has poured his spirit out. You know, in the Bible, I believe it's um, in Hebrew. I have to go back and check it. Or Romans chapter 12, I have to go back and check it. But the Bible says, um, prophesy. And to the proportion of your faith. So I'm going to prophesy to the proportion of my faith. Lord. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you, God, that Martha's coming out of this. Highly favored, God. Blessed, God. I praise you, Lord, that you're holding her bones yes. in your hands, God. Lord, I praise you, Lord, that even if she has to go to the operating room, Lord, that you are the God that shall operate on that arm. Hallelujah. It shall be operated by operated on by the king. Hallelujah. The king which is above all kings. Hallelujah. Because Jesus, your name is above every name, Lord. Hallelujah. I call good health into her. I praise you, Lord, for her blood.
Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, I praise you, Lord, for great ministries that shall come out of this church, God. I praise you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for youth ministers that shall come forth. They shall just spring forth in the name of Jesus. I speak life over this church. I speak healing over this church, God. I praise you, Lord, that the ground has already been plowed, Lord, that the seed has been planted, growth is coming, hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you, Lord, that you give us power to tread over all the powers of the enemy, God. Lord, I even praise you, Lord, that the conviction of the Holy Ghost shall fall upon the sinner, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. If the Holy Ghost convicted me of my sin, it shall convict the other person of theirs, hallelujah, because you're no respecter of persons, oh God. And Lord, I give you praise that you're doing great and mighty works, God. I praise you, Lord, that you're troubling the waters of the enemy, God, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, I praise you, Lord. I praise you, God, for your strength, Lord, over Joey, even right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, God, that he's going to be restored, his mind shall be restored, God, that you have even been holding his tears in your hands, oh God. Lord, I praise you, Lord, that he shall rise up in victory and in strength, oh God, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah. I praise you, Lord, because you are mighty in power, Lord. You are awesome, God. You are a strong tower, God. You are the God that crushed the enemy, God, with your foot, oh God. Even now, you've got your foot on the deck of the enemy, hallelujah. I praise you, Lord, for doing great things in this church, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for the worshipers, God, that shall arise, God. I praise you, Lord, that their hands shall come up to you, Lord, and praise you and surrender to you, O God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you, Lord, right now, God, that you are troubling the grounds of the enemy, God, that you're doing things, Lord, in the spirit realm, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord, for the anointing, God, that breaks yokes, oh God, that people that have been held in captivity, they shall run to this church, God. The enemy has to release them and let them go in the name of Jesus. They shall come out and come forward in the name of Jesus in victory. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord. Any addictions that people have, God, I ask you, Lord, to break them in the name of Jesus. Only you, God, can do this, God, because you love them, Lord, and you want to see them restored back to good health, oh, God. Lord, I praise you, Lord, just put new words in their mouth from your word, God. Lord, let them dream about your word, Lord. Let your word rest upon their hearts, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I praise you, Jesus that you are doing it, that you're doing great and mighty things, Lord. I praise you, Lord, that the enemy has to take his hands right now off the young people. He has to release them and let them go in the name of Jesus. I praise you for this, God. I praise you, Lord. Even Ezekiel, Lord, you can tell Ezekiel to prophesy to those bones. You said, can those bones live? And he said, yes, Lord. And Lord, these bones can live. Hallelujah. For Hallelujah. I praise you, God, right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want the church to stand, and I want you to say, pursue, overtake, and recover all. Pursue, overtake, and recover all. I'm going to pursue, overtake, and recover all. I'm going to pursue, overtake, and recover all. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. for you. 
you, Lord. Let them pursue after you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Lord, and let people love on you like they're supposed to, Jesus, because we are to love on you, Lord.